just gotta grab it right there. <clears throat> Today, we will be checking on the Wiseman Oracle after his shed, and I'm going to be helping him remove that little piece hanging from his lip. No reptile likes having stuck shed. They'll try to itch or rub off any part that's left hanging on. And this method is something I seriously do not recommend due to how dangerously dumb it clearly can be. So why is he not biting me for this? Perhaps because I've always been doing this and he's grown accustomed to it. Or maybe because his perspective of myself, quote unquote, big tall man, as a safeguard, aka the butler, has been implanted in his brain. Or am I just lucky that he tolerates me enough not to bite? Whatever the exact reason may be, it boils down ultimately to his own processed thoughts. A mutual trust forms to some extent. Now I used to pin him and my other kings if they needed shedding assistance. But now for some individuals I just do it freehand. Aspire, Katie, and Omen will just often sit there while I work away. Behind every computer screen lies a hater. Now he's waiting for the right moment in this video for something to go wrong and then he'll go WHAM! See I told you that guy would get bit! Here in this bucket is an old giant monocled cobra that my friend donated for me some time ago, and a skull-faced water snake, both previously thawed out from frozen snakesicles. He rapidly tastes the air, realizing there is prey nearby. But is it dead or alive? He doesn't wait long to find out. Snaps right away at the prey. So ha! Take that, non-believers! Uh, I mean, the venom comes oozing out like melted butter. Slowing it down a bit, that's the last thing you want to imagine entering your bloodstream. People die the quickest from big king bites due to the sheer quantity of unknown substance entering one's bloodstream. I mean, sure, it's either this quick shock death or you wait a couple minutes to half an hour and their venom runs its course and takes you out anyway. Kings often take great caution when they take down other venomous snakes, especially elapids. So what you see here is he's going to be waiting a while to make sure that it's dead before he starts swallowing. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and introduce Katie while bringing her out for a feeding session. Katie is one gentle, curious soul. Unless you're a snake, then use a dead man. It's been over five years since we found her on her deathbed in the jungles of central Thailand. The wound you see on her side was the product of battling with a huge clouded monitor she tried to eat. The monitor was too big, and she too weak and malnourished. She lost five bones in that surgery, but the vets saved her life. Since she was a central king, their population is dwindling. We gave her one more shot at life, but in captivity. There are other ways to preserve the species. Having her as an educational tool for the public is one way to do it. And she's worth much more alive to us as a wonderful ambassador, as opposed to a wasted tragic death. However, I think the story of Katie should be told fully in a future video. For now, 
She's gonna eat up this water snake. Oh, what's this? She's taking a sniff at it. She's processing. Processing. And then knows for sure it's dead. Um, anytime now, Katie. Okay, then. She walks her way slowly up to the head, as this benefits her more in some way. A good growing girl. No, I would love to have a whole episode covering all of her story and diving deeper into her background, but this is just a feeding video. Ah, what the hell? How's one little Katie story, huh? Right, kids? Hooray! Yay! Throw it back years ago, she had just been with me a shy of a year. I was always having her out, even free roaming the room most of the time, including nights. Now back at the time, I could allow that. Now I have too many animals. She would sleep under the couch every day and come out when she's curious. At this point, she hasn't shown any defensive behavior toward me or most other people at all. Most visitors could come up close and she'd be calm. Oddly, the only two people that she's ever been ticked off by ended up being scamming backstabbers. Weird, right? To what degree do animals see through people? Sometimes I would walk around the room and she'd follow me, or even climbing up the couch and coiling on my lap while I watch Netflix. Now don't get me wrong, I definitely don't think she loves me, but she associates my whole being as safety, sticking around near the creature that took her off a rough spot to a nurturing environment, and she knows it. I'm fine with helping these animals and not getting the love returned. It's only in their nature. It's a reptile. Sometimes a derpy glance is enough to make me smile. The end. How is that? Kings will try to walk down their prey as fast as they can, or at least hope to be in the most suitable place to eat. There are many dangers that snakes often face while eating, a perfect opportunity for a stalking predator. But here in Katie's case, she knows there is no danger here. She's the top dog, finishing up on the tail before realigning her jaws. She is almost 10 feet in length and for this locality, this is quite the norm. So, let's say goodbye to Katie for now, and we'll let her rest. And let's go back to Oracle. For a meal, you can never be too careful. Especially when it's one that could bite back. As technical as immunities can be though, it is impossible to state what all happens inside when a king bites a monocled cobra, or vice versa. Walking down this six-foot meal, he breathes rather heavily. It's a gigantic meal, so it takes him more effort to breathe. His breathing tube pokes out under his meal and expels air. Due to his sheer size, the blow is rather strong and often sounds like a giant growl. Back in the day, when no one had ever seen one such as this, you couldn't help but to call them an actual dragon. Getting up, to probably even 18 feet or more back then. Feeling one powerful breath after another is incredible. This is definitely a dragon of today. I also would like to address that little lump right behind his head. Not to worry, as it is just a growth called a lipoma. This type of fat tissue growth can be quite common for wild adult snakes. A few have grown here and there on him, and over the years, the vets assured me that they would not bother him in any way. Oracle has shown me time and time again that he is a formidable hunter. He knows exactly where to pin a snake and extinguish it the fastest. Nowadays, I don't ever have to give him life though. Since he takes frozen thought readily, and supplies always here. Working with these animals has always been a pleasure, and it always will be, even with the individuals who are very bad tempered. 
but trying to see yourself through the eyes of the snake is one giant step forward into understanding why they act the way they do. Choosing whether to trust that we are a predator to them or just a harmless animal or plant slash surrounding surface, whatever it may be called. A line can be drawn depending on what type of snake we're talking about. But the only way you know where the line is, is when you cross it. There is a major juxtaposition comparing the level of how, let's say, Mambas are able to perceive you to what a flowerpot snake may be thinking. Sadly, we can't get much deeper into the good stuff yet. Science knows very little about the reptilian brain. Different depths of air quote emotions that may be swirling behind their googly eyes and puppy dog face. He realigns his jaw just a bit more and then he slowly sniffs, leans in, and whispers. You promised it was one feeder snake and 10 minutes of footage, no more. Now let me sleep and get the hell out of my house. Well, he's got me with that one. So thanks Oracle for having me over and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.